Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. It's good to see everybody here this morning. Amen. Uh, I guess it's been a little bit warm here in the last few days, hasn't it? Man, I tell you what. I mean, it just really did. But you know what? We're here. We're alive. And we're happy. We're blessed. And we're here for Sabbath. And everything else. So it's good to have everybody here. Glad to have everybody here from Facebook. Welcome our guest this morning. Glad to have everything else. And Alice, you should be Steve Terry. Looks like she's feeling better, doing a lot better. Finally got rid of that coughing, did she? So we're able to see her around here and see her bright, smiling face. You know, nobody else may be smiling, but Terry always is. You know, so we always can depend on that. So anyway, uh, we'll go with this morning uh, uh, with our announcements. Uh, you know, no one should attend church. If, I know this gets kind of repetitive, but it's something that we need to always remind everybody and everything else. No one should attend church if ill or have symptoms of COVID or have been in close contact with someone with COVID. Members and guests that have health conditions should consider remaining at home. Anyone who has recently attended a church event and has later tested positive should notify the pastor or the head elder of their test results. Social distancing will be practiced in all areas of the church. Family units may be seated together. Individuals are requested to be seated at least six feet apart. Fellowship lunch is canceled until further notice. And I said here that we will continue with Kids Club, but I was informed that, that we're probably not going to look at that until next month. So as of right now, at least until August, uh, we're not going to be having our Kids Club. And of course, no transportation is provided for the church attendees. Most of the must provide their own transportation. Please do not engage in hugs or handshakes. That's killing a lot of people around here. I see everybody making an effort that, oh, no, 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 no. You know, if they're responsible, they automatically, and then they have to remind themselves. You know, I hope we don't get out of the habit before we, you know what, I kind of doubt that that'll happen. You know, but anyway, at some point in time, we'll be able to take and have, hug each other and have handshakes again. It just takes time. Of course, we have face, face masks and hand sanitizers that are available for anybody that needs it. And of course, we're not really requiring it at this time. But if things get worse, we may wind up requiring it. But right now, we're not having to do that. Also, I'm kind of a little surprise over word for the church. So I was hoping they'd be here this week, but they're not here. But anyway, I got a surprise. So now y'all can act like a bunch of kids at Christmas waiting for your prize next week. You know? All right, that'll be awesome. <laughs> anyway, uh, of course, today we have Pastor Josh as our guest speaker. I visited with him earlier. It looks like we're going to meet him twice next month and twice in September. You know, I'll tell you what, I guess he said he's got to take care of us kids. You know, he's got to take care of his flock. So anyway, and the title of his message is Gifts, Gifts of Grace. And this future scripture this morning is Romans 12, 6 through 8. And I said about that, I had next week mentioned, but uh, Matthew or Randy, Looks like it'll be Randy and everything else and everything because uh, the Harvard Church is opening next week. So Matthew will be tied up with the church there in Harvard. So uh, they're going to have a limited schedule and they're going to try to open things back up over there. And him being the elder and the other elder is not going to be there. He's an older guy. So Matthew will have to be there in the Harvard Church next week. And then uh, the next week was going to be Randy also, but uh, Pastor's going to be. So he's going to be here on, on, on August 1st. So, you know, we can utilize him and abuse him. So. Uh, church budget, we received $790 for the month. And we're under 570 so far for the month. This week, our designated offering goes to our local church budget. And, of course, any loose offerings that you guys put in the basket, which is located there in the back, will be utilized for operations of our church van for fuel, uh, paying, uh, uh, in, well, insurance is on a separate budget than I. But that will take, take care of the license plates and stickers, which happen to come out at the end of this month. So I'm going to have to get that taken care of. So anyway, uh, but anyway, that's kind of what we use that loose money for a church offer, van operation. 
Of course, remind everybody that there is a location of faithnewtexasadventurechurch.org that you can take and give uh, offerings that you need to, would like you to the church, you go to the menu item, and there's different items that you guys can present to give to. Uh, this is our, uh, you have a little allergy issue, so my nose has been itching a little bit. But here's our contact information. Of course, our contact information is always available on our Facebook, so people that are on Facebook, if you're needing Bible studies or prayers, or if there's anything that you might need, please contact one of these people here, and we'll be glad to get back with you and see how we can how we can help. Uh, prayer requests. Uh, we need to. Do we have an extra prayer request here this morning? Yes, Mr. Uh, I'm praying that they call me this week for moms, nursing home, saying that both the ladies that works in the nutrition, she just wants to go forward over. Yeah, and I'm just praying that they're already in the goal. I just hope that none of them stay there. Um, you know, I've got a feeling we're going to be dealing with COVID for a while. You know, there's no getting out of it. And it's something that we've got to deal with, something we've got to deal to. But we do the best we can. We know what we need to be doing is to try to help ourselves the best that we can. And, you know, we can only do so much. And it's up to the Lord to do the rest. And that's where prayer comes. Well, definitely, there's, that's probably one of the best protections we've got is praying for our Lord. Amen? And also, uh, I know I have somebody go extra on this list here. Uh, it's Randy's sister, Lenora, and her Randy and his sister, Lenora, and family. Uh, they lost a nephew. He lost his nephew last week. And he already had the issue. I believe he has COVID. You know, finally took care of it. So... We want to keep Randy and his family in prayer. You know, they've been dealing with a lot here lately. You know, Randy's got bone knees he's working on. And hopefully in a couple of weeks they'll get that done and taken care of. You know, he needs our prayers for that because he's got some issues he's got to overcome in order to get that done. So we need to definitely need to keep him in our prayers. Anybody else could need that for a prayer request? Yes, sir. His name is Dana. So when I talk to you,
particular type of steroid through a nebulizer, and that he's, he's done that to 20, 127 patients, 100% recovery. Um, so he had it online, they told him to take it off and he could prove it. So right now, he's gathering all the information on these people that he's done the test and what he's done so that they can allow him to uh, advertise that so that people that are getting really sick can go over there to Midland and get that done. So Di right now, she had the hydrochloroquine and now she's going to the Midland system. She's doing a lot better. You know, as time goes on, I think we're going to find some things Going to help. Yes. You know, the Lord's going to guide us into the right direction, I promise you. And I have one more. My co worker's sister, her name's Anita. She works for the school system. Um, I don't know her last name, but she she suffers with asthma and she got COVID, so she's struggling a little right now um, because of the asthma. She's really feeling hard. Okay, thank you. All right, any praises this morning? before we move on. We've all got a lot of praises. Yeah, praise the Lord for our health, praise the Lord for our jobs. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Praise Him for our health and um, for our faith. You know, sometimes we have these things come to test our faith. And uh, I, I praise Him for helping me remain faithful and trusting Him. Amen. Yeah, we have our time sometimes to face but you know, at some point in time, we've got to pick ourselves up and realize the Lord's there and move right on. You know, by bootstraps, you can tell I'm kind of country. <laughs> Very country. But anyway, and I don't even wear a cowboy hat and boots, and yet I'm still country. But anyway, uh, any, any other praises this morning? All right, let's move on here. As we stand, we have this hope, we stand as we sing. <laughs>
Have a good day. Have a good afternoon. Have a good dinner. Have a good trip. See, that's not so hard. Oh, and I don't like it when highway drivers don't move over to the left lane to let merging traffic onto the highway. Share the road, I say. Those are my pet peeves. Everybody has one or two. According to Proverbs 6, 16 through 19, even God has a few. Six to be exact. Well, make that seven. These are the things the Lord hates. Seven that are detestable to him. Haughty eyes, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked schemes, and feet that are quick to rush into evil, a false witness who pours out lies, and a person who stirs up conflict in the community. So let me get that right. The six things God can't stand are a cocky look, dishonesty, the death of innocent people, wicked plans, people who are quick to do evil, and a witness who lies. But to be very clear, he adds a seventh item to the list, the thing that really upsets him. His greatest frustration is people stirring up trouble among others. When you're tempted to start a rumor, spread gossip, be cliquish, or say something that could start a fight, remember God's list. He hates our causing division among people. No good will come from it. It will just upset God and everyone else involved. Before you say or do anything questionable, ask yourself, Will this cause conflict or division? If the answer is yes, don't do it. And we need to remember Proverbs 6, 16. There are six things the Lord hates, seven that are detestable in Him. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, show us that we can live like Jesus our Lord. Us that we can do it because if we have you in our hearts, we can do anything that our Lord Jesus did. And we pray this to the precious of all of you. Thank you, Miss Mary. As we stand and continue with our worship this service this morning, this is one of my favorite songs over here. The wonder of it all. Please stand.
We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If, I, if your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance to your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is a giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. With that being said, shall we stand for prayer? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We do thank you for your many blessings. And they are here give you praise, for we are healthy. We have our jobs, and we have our faith in you. When one specifically said, I am thankful that I maintain my faith in my Lord and Savior, which it is, may we never lose out on faith. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for watching over us, keeping us, and, and directing our path that leads to heaven. And we do ask you, Dear Heavenly Father, our people who are ill, there are those in the nursing home, there are those that we know that we work with, like Di and somebody's sister and Bernita who has asthma and, and also COVID. We have those who have COVID along with their illnesses. And we have families uh, uh, who have uh, members who have passed away, like Bill Wells who passed away, who had cancer and had COVID. And then uh, his daughter and family are really grieving for his loss. Be with his family and, and show them one way or another, that you are with them and you understand their loss and, and their heart and their heart heartache. Please be with Richard and Janie, Edward with his cancer. Uh, Tell me, Father, have so many uh, prayerless who need your help, who need your guidance, who need hope and faith in Christ. We ask you to reach these people in the way that only you can reach them. You have this power, this unending power. You have this reachable manner where people listen and come to you. And we ask you to put your healing hands over all of these people who are ill and open. And we ask you to help your Father, please impress upon people to use common sense. Have them wear their face mask when they need to, to wear it. And then they go out in public, wear, wear them. If this can be stopped dramatically, this, this COVID can be slowed down dramatically. People will just use common sense and praise upon them to use their own judgment. Because I know if we do our part, the Lord will do His in protecting us. Dear Heavenly Father, we ask you to be with each and every one of us, those who are listening in Facebook land, and those who are here, and those who hear this. I ask you to reach all of them and, and give us the, the understanding that we need, the patience that we need to deal with one another, and help us guide others to Jesus Christ. And there's one individual on our on prayer list who we put up there is Dana. Uh, she has left you, she has walked away from you, she has now become an atheist. There are atheists in the world, you have to follow, that need a foxhole experience. I beg of you, reach them. The only, the only way you know that they will know that you are doing this. Be with us, tempted by this community, God is here to protect us, and above all, keep our feet on that path that leads to heaven. We ask you and thank you to Jesus Christ, who is our Lord, our only Savior and Redeemer. In this we say, Amen. amen.
2,500 people without shelter or personal belongings. On the evening of the next day, local Adventist churches and ADRA Agra had already served 300 meals and given 500 basic food baskets, clothes, bedding, shoes, and other necessities to those who had lost almost everything. While many residents stood in line to receive help from the church of go or government for their basic needs, one Haitian popsicle seller thrilled the relief teams, said Fernando Andesa Morris, one of the Adra workers, even though most of Haitians living in Brazil struggle to survive as refugees after an earthquake ravaged their country in 2010, this man decided to sacrifice. Walking up the line of the survivors, he, he gave away all the popsicles remaining in his box, which were his only source of income, a small act with, with huge import as a modern representative of the poor widow. This man was moved to help others, giving all that God had placed in his hand. Whether we live in poverty or affluence, do we need to experience some loss before being able to sympathize with loss who are suffering, with those who are suffering? Or do we instead allow the Holy Spirit to change our heart, giving us empathy and true love are we ready to imitate Christ, sacrificing all, even our, even our lives, for the redemption and well-being of others? Of course, tithes and offerings do not represent all the popsicles in our box, but they are a token of our desire to help others, feeding with spiritual food, those who have been ravaged by the fire of sin. As we partner with him in this holy work, we may be sure that he will provide for us. There is nothing to fear. We will now pray for our our offerings for the local church budget. Let's pray. Dear Lord, make us instruments of your grace and love, using what you gave us to bring spiritual nourishment to those who need to know you through us. Please bless these gifts we have we brought as our worship. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Sam. Appreciate that. All right, we'll continue this morning. Uh, let Jericho, glad to see you in, in your siblings with you with us this morning. Thank you. And everything Thank else. You. It's about time. <laughs> you know, let's go, let's go, let's make this a habit, not a victory, okay? But we love you guys. We really enjoy having you with us. And everything, amen? Amen. All right. Anyway, we'll go ahead and continue with our special music, No More Not from Fountainview Academy. And then following that, then uh, Pastor Josh will present his message.
Because it's so hard. It's, he's, he always be like, it's so hard to give him a gift because he gives us gifts that are so good, right? That we can never imagine that we even want it. Right? And he's so powerful, so creative. And it's kind of like that saying you might have heard before. Uh, what, do you give the per what do you give someone who already has it all, right? What do you give? So I think, as I begin to think about gifts, and, and particularly the gifts that God gives us for the benefit of the church, um, I began to think, do we sometimes run in to that same frustration, to that same problem? Because what do we give to God? If he's given us the most amazing gift, what do we give to God? What gift of service can we give to God? Because I, more often than not, we often feel like, man, I'm, I'm not a good speaker. I, I don't know the Bible well enough. I, I'm not talented in this. I, I don't know about this. How, what do I give to God? And many times, sometimes people feel, I'm not good enough to serve. But this morning, I'm going to tell you that you, what you have to give is enough for God. What you have to give, whatever little it might be, it's enough for God to do something worth, something significant, something huge. God can do an amazing thing if you are just willing to give whatever you have to the Lord. I want us to look at one of my favorite passages in Scripture. And, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to open up our eyes a little bit. It's Ephesians chapter 2. It's going to open, us, open up our eyes to the magnitude of God's gift. Because if we want to understand how we can serve God, we need to understand what gift He has given us. If we want to give a gift of service to God, if we want to serve God with all our hearts, we need to understand fully the gift that God has given us. Ephesians chapter 2, and we're going to spend a little bit of time there. Um, you just follow along. I'm going to start with verses 2, 1 to 3. Um, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1 to 3. It says this, And he, God, made alive who are dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, that's the enemy, Satan, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we all, we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and we're by nature children of wrath, just as the others. Let's pause there for a moment. Let's, let's think about what Paul is telling us here. He's telling us the condition that we were all in at some point. All of us started right here where Paul is telling us that we were dead in sin, dead in trespasses. God found us in this condition. We were under the influence of the enemy. We were being controlled by our desires. That's how God found us. I believe that Paul reminds the Ephesians this truth of their original condition so that they would understand their need of grace. They would need to understand it because often, as Christians, we forget how we started on this journey with Jesus. We forget the magnitude of the sin we were in. We forget how immense the, how we were in such a condition. We were dirty. But God found us. Amen. And that's the thing. If, if God saved us from a little, we think His grace is worth a little. But you and I need to understand that we were in this horrible condition. Let's continue here where Paul uh, in verse 4 to 7, it says, But God, oh, I love that, I love that phrase. But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches 
of his grace and his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. Do you see the power of grace? Do you see what God has done for us, the condition in which he found us? The journey which he's bringing us along and now where we're headed toward the ages to come where we can sit with Jesus. I love that phrase where it begins, but God. But God. I, I want to encourage you for a moment there because often we think, man, uh, the situation I'm in. Uh, and, and the thing is we can be honest with God. I want you to be honest with God. I want you to be just completely vulnerable with God. We can't fake it with God. And that's the thing. We can describe our situation with God. God, my life is not going my way. The, the relationships in my life, the, the marriage, the family, the job, the business is not going my way. The depression, the anxiety is not going my way, God. But you. Right? So we can say, right, we're in the middle of a pandemic, but God has great love. For every single one of us. Our family is struggling. But God is rich in mercy. We're going through a difficult situation. And, and this is, we're struggling. But God raised me up to sit with Christ. Life isn't going the way I expected. But God is showing me his grace and his kindness. Be honest with the Lord. But always add that statement. But God, fill in the blank. What encouragement it is to know that we serve this type of God that found us in this horrible condition and has taken us on this journey toward heaven. Jesus gave us this amazing gift so that you and I can live in a restored relationship with him. This is what, this is what grace is. We need to understand the grace of God and really, really let it soak in for a moment. Because once we understand the grace of God, once we begin to once we begin to just let it soak in into our lives, there we can begin to commit our lives to God. We need to understand what God saved us from. So then, once we understand this, we can begin to think about what do we need to give to God? What gift? If He's given us this amazing gift of grace. How can we serve? How can we give back, right? Because God is much more creative than any of our friends that give us gifts. God is much more thoughtful than anyone you know. And he's given us this amazing gift. But how do we give back to God? How do we commit our lives to God? Verses 8 and 10. Ephesians 2, 8 to 10. It says, for by grace you have been saved through faith, not of yourself. It is the gift of God, not of works. Lest anyone should boast, for we are his worksmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. God tells us something, uh, Paul tells us something really, really important here about our service for God, because, you know, he makes it clear. He makes it clear here because he says, not of works, you can't be saved, it has to be through faith, through believing in Jesus, but then it says that we were created for good works. Now, a, a lot of times we can be getting confused here because if often we think, okay, I'm such a good person, I do these good things, I come to church, that's going to be enough to save me. But Paul is just straight up, he's so honest with us. He tells us, your good works, they're not going to save you. Our service toward God does not make us more worthy of salvation. It doesn't. It doesn't make us move. We all started in the same condition, no matter how my, more sinful we might be, because humans were so good at categorizing our sins and, and ranking them. But to God, He saw us in the same condition. Yet, look what Paul tells us. If the works are not going to save you, but because you are created new, we're designed to be in His service. God prepared, look what it says, God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So every single one of us are created, recreated, to be in service to God. Not because that's going to make us more
more worthy of salvation, but because we understand the grace of God. God, you are so gracious to me, God. You loved me even though I was, uh, I was so broken. God, I just want to live in service to you. You see, our commitment to God flows from accepting the gift of God. Our commitment comes from understanding that God accepted us. Look, it's so clear here. It says that we were while we were dead in trespasses, while you, while you were your worst, while I was in the worst of sin, in the worst condition, God accepted you and me. You see where it's coming from now? The service for God, it, it comes from a gratitude. It's, it's like saying, God, you, you just love me so much, Lord, I just want to be in service to you. You and I need to understand that we are children of God. We serve from a place of acceptance rather than working and striving to be accepted by God. You see, that's paganism. Paganism is trying to be accepted by God. God already accepted you. God loves you. Now, are you going to accept that grace? Are you going to allow that to transform your life? And you see, that's where we need to understand the, 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 the reality of this, the question at hand, are you willing, am I willing to allow that to transform my life? You see, God created us. We are his workmanship. We have received a grace, a new identity in him. We're supposed to live a different way. Romans 12, turn with me there. Paul, he, he tells us what it, this commitment should look like. When we've understood, when we've understood the grace of God, when we've understood how the love, the acceptance that God has given us, this Paul tells us how that commitment should look like. Verses one and two, Romans twelve one and two, it says, "I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service." And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. What Paul is telling us, as children of God, we need to adopt a new way of life. Because of the mercies of God, things change. The way we think, the way we, we, we do things it's supposed to be transformed. I'm going to read out the New Living Translation because it gives us a little bit more, makes it a little clearer, a little bit more updated language. It says, And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all He has done for you. I love that. We give our bodies, we give our lives to God because of what He has done for us. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind He will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. So because of the gift of God, because of the grace of God, the gift He's given, we have to give our bodies to God. What does that look like? We have to live a sacrificial life. You have to live a different lifestyle. And I think most importantly, I think, our, I think God has to change our thoughts. What do you think? Because I believe that, I think one of the biggest reasons why many Christian churches are ineffective is because Christians have changed on the outside, but their mind continues to be the same. Has God changed the way you think? You see, God is calling us to a higher way of living than what we're accustomed to. God is challenging us in reality to just to go beyond. Because a lot of times Christians, they, 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 they believe, okay, I've accepted salvation, right? And, 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 and that's it, right? They, that's it, right? They go to church and, okay, I go to church. But really, if we think about it, if we apply this, it's, God is telling us something, is, is calling us to something higher. We need to ask ourselves, have I really given my lifestyle over to Christ? 
Or is he, does he just take a couple hours from me on the weekend? Does my way of, of, of thinking change since I follow Jesus? Or do I go back to this, those old attitudes? Am I really committed to serving God and whatever? Not just in church, but where I work, and where I live, and where I do things. Am I really committed to serve God? You see, we need to ask ourselves those questions. We can ask ourselves this question. Are we the community? Imagine what our church would look like. Not just this church, but I'm talking about the Adventist church and, and, and the, the bigger church, Christians alike. Imagine if we would challenge ourselves a little bit more to live like what Paul is telling us. I think our church would 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 grow. I think our, our, our church would, would shift. I think people would, would see transformation happening here. We need to ask ourselves, am I really changing the way I think, my lifestyle? Am I really taking the gift of grace seriously? I think especially in the times that we're living in, um, man, we need to really take the message of Jesus seriously. The message of the gospel. Romans 12, 3 to 5. I love it how Paul just tells us what, what the church looks like when the people of God take grace seriously. Take look, just, just look what it says. It says, verse starting in verse 3, all the way to 8. So for I say through the grace given to me. To everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. It's interesting that I just want to pause there for a moment. It's so interesting that God pretty much is telling us to, or is telling us here that whenever you think of yourself higher than someone, it's like you're drunk. That's crazy. God is telling us, we need to understand the grace of God. And it says, it continues here. For as we have many members in one body, but all the members do not have the same function, so we being many are one body in Christ, and individually members of one another. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, let us use them. Prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith. Or ministry, let us use it in our ministry. He who teaches in teaching, he who exhorts in exhortation, he who gives with liberality, he who leads with diligence, he who shows mercy with cheerfulness. Wow. Paul, Paul's challenging us. Don't you think? God has given every single one of us a gift that can be used to grow the kingdom of God. And maybe you, maybe you, you're, you're seeing something. Maybe oh, do I have something? It's so interesting. Mercy and cheerfulness is a gift from God that you can serve to the church. We need more merciful people, people who give, people who teach. These are things, and that's the thing. Not all of them might might be different according to your personality, to what you do. What Paul is telling us that God is such a creative and thoughtful gift giver. He's given you something to edify, to grow the church. And His grace, because he, he just didn't give us a gift of grace that we're saved, right? In that gift, He gave you something specific that you can grow the church. Ephesians 4, 7, to each one of us, grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. Each one of us has a gift. Every single one of you. Go with me to Ephesians chapter 4, 11 to 13. Ephesians chapter 4, 11 to 13. And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers, for the equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God. To a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. 
Now we can say, okay, but I'm not an apostle. Jesus didn't call me directly. Right? I haven't seen him like the apostles did back then. I'm not a prophet. I'm not an evangelist. You can say, I'm not a pastor. Well, I am a pastor. But I say, you can say, I'm not a teacher, right? But here Paul tells us the goals of each of these gifts. What are the goals? Equipping the saints for the work of ministry. You know, you don't need to be any, you don't have to have any of those titles to equip people for the work of ministry. You really don't. Edifying the body of Christ? You don't need any of those titles. You see, you could you could be like you could have the gifts of one of these titles here, and any of the gifts that you might have. Another one is to bring unity. That's a gift from God to bring unity. Bring the knowledge of Jesus. That's the most important. Yeah. Can you use your gift? I don't know. I don't, I don't know what you might have. I know some of you guys. Some of your gifts are a little bit more public. But some of your gifts are a little more private. That you might not know, maybe you're right now, what's my gift, right? Ultimately, the goal is to bring the knowledge of Jesus. You, don't, you might not have one of those titles. You see, the church, I think, throughout time, throughout the many years that the church has been around, not just the Seventh-day Adventists, but even beyond even before the church began, something happened to the church. And church reduced to showing up to the service. And I love, I love being able to be here and to share with you. I love it. I love that you're here. But you see, church cannot just be you watching someone else using their spiritual gift. It can't just be that. Church is much bigger than that. Church is the people. We saw how we, 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 even though we weren't able to meet, we came together. So church throughout this when we were closed down. We, we were able to pray for one another, even though we weren't able to see each other. People we were praying. That's what happened, right? People were praying. We were praying so that we could continue. That's the church. Churches, when we were able to come together with the kids and just talk about Jesus and, and play. I was playing the last time. Wow, it's so sad that we can't have it right now. But that's church. Yeah. We're playing Frisbee out there. That's church. That's church. The people of God are the church. Not just you watching me for 45 minutes preach. 1 Corinthians 12. Go with me there. 1 Corinthians 12, verses 4 to 11. It continues just to tell us, man, Paul is so good, right? You know, uh, it's an interesting note. Paul wasn't that much of a good preacher. I'll say this. There was a, and if y'all remember, there's a story where there's a young man that fell asleep <laughs> while Paul was preaching and fell off, right? How do you remember that story, right? And that's probably why he started writing. <laughs> other other the apostles were great preachers. They didn't see a need. You see, you see, you see how interesting God, you know, uses in, in, in the Corinthian church, especially, they had an issue because Paul was too much of a simple man. He he didn't dress, he, he didn't have, he was always sick. And, and in, in the first and second Corinthians, Paul talks about these things. Get it right. And that's why we have these things here. You see, do you, do you get to see what how God uses the different things that we are talented in or gifted in? It doesn't just need to be the ones that are very public. But look, read with me what it says here. First Corinthians 12, 4 to 11. It says there are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. There are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit. To another, the word of knowledge through the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healings by the same Spirit. 
to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another different kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues, but one and the same spirit works all these things, distributing to each, each one individually as he wills. Half, 
a cup half full, half empty, fill up measures the exact amount of water there is in that cup. And he's like, There's, it's impossible. Philip and the disciples, they see this amazing challenge, right? Uh, he understands the magnitude of the task, and it's just impossible. But Jesus was testing Philip, testing the disciples. Andrew says in verses 8 and 9, it says, Andrew, Simon's Peter, Simon Peter's brother spoke up. It's a young boy with five barley loaves and two fish. But what is good? What good is that with this huge I, I began to see something in this story. I began to, to think about the impossible task that we have ahead of us. Jesus has, has called us, right, to go and preach the gospel, to reach every nation, every town, every kingdom, to, to reach the world with the gospel. But it seems almost impossible all the time. Even in our community, sometimes I, I ask myself, can we even reach this, this community, even if it's not that big? Can we reach plainly for Jesus? It seems impossible. People are hungry for, for the bread of the gospel. People are hungry for the words of truth. And it just seems like it's impossible. Like, can we even do it? Can we reach? Like, man, our, our church is small, and, and, and some of us just can't do some of the things that we were able to do. And, and, and then this COVID thing hits, and it's like, God, how can we be effective? How can we serve our community? How can we reach people for Jesus? And I think, as I was thinking about this story, and just thinking about this message, I'm going to think, could it be that Jesus is testing us at this moment? Because he knows what he's about to do. Because God, it's, it's so hard. Can we even do it? But just as I said at the beginning of the sermon, what we do have to give is enough for God to do something significant. You might ask yourself, like Andrew, what good is this? And and this boy is what I love about this boy is he's really Barley loaves and two fishes. These were probably small fishes. They weren't big old fishes, no. They were probably small. Just to make a little taco, <laughs> a little burrito. Watch. Yeah, I'm getting hungry, y'all. I'm man. What's going on, y'all? Sorry. This was the, this was the food of the Barley loaves. What does that tell us about the gifts that God has given us? So we need to take the grace of God seriously, the message of Jesus seriously, because when you and I, the little that we have, we're just willing. God, just throw, God, God I can give you this. This is all I have. That's the only part. I believe that we can reach this community. I believe that we can reach the children in this neighborhood. I believe that we can reach people that are, that are hungry and thirsty for, for the message of the gospel. I'm going to finish off with, with one thing here. I, this, week, um, I, this week, I was just, just thinking. Uh, I had a moment with the Lord. And I went to Revelation chapter 21, and I want to finish up with this. Revelation 21. I, I just began to think about what it says here. Starting with verse 1. It says, this is John speaking. It says, Now I saw a new heaven and new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also, there was no more sea. Then I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. 
And I heard a loud voice from heaven, heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them. They shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God. And I love these verses here. God will wipe away every tear from your eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, nor for the former things have passed away. I began to think about this. I was sitting there uh, in my room, just thinking about this, and I just thought, oh, God, this seems so, just so out there. It just seems like, God, like, I see the world right now and how messed up it is. Like, God, everything that's going on, um, things that are going on in my heart, things, the, the struggles that we're having, um, God, just everything. God, like, is, can, can this even be real? I, was, I just began to think about this. Can, God, it, it just seems so out there. And I really, and I, 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 a thought came to my mind, it's just, I realize I'm just so used to this world, how it is, that this just seems so unreal. It doesn't, it's like so out there that it's like, God, do I even really believe this? Like, if, is this going to be reality? Like, just how I open my eyes and I can see everything that's here. God, will I ever really, like, God, do I really believe it? Like, how I believe this is here. Like, God, do I really believe like, ah, oh, it just doesn't make sense, God. And, and I began to think about, God, your grace is so amazing. You saw how, how you took us, like, God, you, we didn't deserve this, and you're bringing us to this?
this is it. I don't know how unrealistic it might seem to you, but I'm praying even for me because I need to realize that this is real. And I just accept it more and more every day. Yeah, what?
Thank you for joining us this morning. Those who are watching uh, online, we join us once again. We're streaming every Sabbath. And I hope you could join us again. If this has been a blessing for you, please share uh, with someone that you care about. Um, I'm hopefully this will continue to reverberate throughout Facebook. And that may be a blessing to others as well. We'll finish off here with a blessing from 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 14. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. And God bless you all. Thank you for viewing our videos. Hope it is a blessing for you and yours. Um, hopefully, please to like and subscribe to our videos and everything we have, every platform we have. Thank you. God bless.